welcome to episode 251 of the Daily Fantasy Edge. My name is Adam Levitan. I'm one of the analysts here at DraftKings. I'm the father of the most beautiful beast in the world, Jerry. And today, we have a very special guest. This, this is a young man who claims large field GPPs are in fact not lotteries. This is a young man who lives in the highly controversial mass multi-entry streets. A man in the zombie killing mode on Twitch. I believe he goes by the Latin lover on Twitch. It is, of course, Manny Laura of lineupstudy.com, a.k.a. M. Jordan T. Mac on DraftKings. Love me some Tracy McGrady. Manny, what's going on? How's it going, man? Thank you for having me. Yeah, uh, no, I, I can promise you these MME streets aren't that bad. I, I promise you, Adam. Uh, <laughs> I'd love to see you there more. I'm trying to convince you on this pod. Don't get scared. Okay. And you know what? It, it's interesting to me. The reason I actually wanted to have you on is because there's a lot of misconceptions out there about MME. And, and I actually, uh, I don't, I, people who listen to the pod all the time know I don't have a ton of respect for quote unquote GPP players, right. but I do have respect for people who are implementing uh, a thoughtful strategy, no matter what they're doing. And it seems like a lot of the GPP players are just like, well, here's my player pool. Uh, I like these guys. Let me ram them in there and, and hope for the best. It seems to me from watching some of your stuff that you actually have a strategy beyond that, which is why I wanted to have you on. I actually find it interesting. And yeah, it could certainly be convinced. I mean, I have uh, only put in 150 lineups a few times. Well, I do it in WNBA, but besides that, I've only done it a few times in my life in other sports. So um, yes, yeah, man, we're going to get into savage that. that it's only in WNBA, but okay. Uh, <laughs> well, why not NFL? You seem like you're a little bit, you seem like you're pretty qualified for NFL. <laughs> Well, I don't know. I'm just saying, I think. Yeah, well, we'll get into why a little bit. I, I think, um, yeah, we'll get into why in a little bit, but I'm just so focused on on trying to find the one lineup, and I, it's so distracting to me to play a lot of lineups. Um, sure. But we're going to get into that. We're going to get into all that. First, though, I want to find out how you got into DFS, because I'm always curious how people uh, get into DFS seriously. Like, for me, it was just a no-brainer. Like, I was already grinding fantasy pretty hard. I was already grinding uh poker dfs was just perfect but i'm curious how you got into it yeah so i i feel a lot of guys came from similar backgrounds right i think poker had a lot of similarities when it came to uh just just how people were playing grinding what they did with bankrolls and in, in, in poker and just kind of shifted i i never came from poker uh i've heard the other story where oh you're a finance major you worked at a bank you did investing you did whatever i also do not have a finance background uh I am a normal dude, man. I, I am a guy off the streets. I had a normal job. I played season long with my buddies. Uh, I really, really enjoyed season long. Uh, but it got to the point where, you know, my friends just weren't paying anymore. You ever have those friends just like, oh, oh yeah. I'll pay you later. I'll pay the league later. I'll pay the league later. You know, they just never pay. Uh, so two seasons later, coincidentally, I won two seasons in a row. Uh, I saw a DraftKings ad. Uh, and I kept seeing them and I kept seeing them and I kept seeing them. Uh, until I tried. And, and there you go. I, I, I fell in love. I lost money like everyone else the first couple of times you play. Uh, and, and I joined and I, I never really looked back. It, it's, it's not a crazy story. I, I, I hope, I, I wish it was a little bit crazier, but no, it's, it's pretty much the same story everyone has. I just, I don't have that poker finance background. I'm a, I'm a normal dude, man. Uh, normal guy off the streets. What was your normal job? And did, did you love sports? Is that why you wanted to do it? Yeah, I, I've loved sports since I was a kid. So I never watched cartoons. I, I've always watched Sports Center. It's like my daily show. I, I, I did have a normal job. I worked at, a, at an advertising agency. I was part of the digital department. So everything mm -hmm. computers. Um, I, I, I'd always been on computer. It, it was like a, I, I'm very well versed when it comes to computers. Um, I also used to be a pro gamer, for those that don't know. Mm. Uh, so, so I've always been on computers. I like that DFS is on a computer. It's much easier for me. Um, and, and yeah, that you could do it daily, all, obviously, was a huge catch for me. So uh, yeah, very easy transition, I'd say. Did you ever play cash or, or think about playing cash or you just always been living that GPP life? Never. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm as real as it gets, Adam. And I, <laughs> it, it's cool that you asked that because I, I've gotten that often. And it's I even from the very beginning where you're taught... Uh, put a certain portion in play in cash, put a certain portion in GPP, whether it's the 80, 20 rule or what, what, whatever it is that you heard the first days. I've never done that. Never. I didn't even try it, which is different. I played, I think it was two cash games. Um, I won one and I lost one. Beautiful. I, I think that was the best thing that could have happened to me. Nothing happened except losing to rake. And I'm like, this is, 
this is, I, I do not like this. How am I going <laughs> to grind my $2 right. and get back a dollar eighty or a dollar ninety or whatever it is, do the same thing tomorrow, lose it back, and all of a sudden I'm down twenty cents for both the win and the loss. Like I, I cannot yeah. do this. Even playing a hundred dollars, doing the same thing, I can't do it. It just wasn't worth my time. Um, I'll kind of get into why I, 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 I never played a, a little bit later, but yeah, it just never caught my eye, and it was more of a just a common sense thing for me. It just, I don't know. To me, cash is boring. I, yeah. I, I, I don't want to tell it to you because you, you play primarily cash, but to me, that's, that's so boring. I don't, I don't yeah. know. Um, for 99% of the people listening to this, I think they should be playing primarily GPPs, right? Like, um, it's fun, you know, and for 99% of the people, it, right. it should be about fun. It's not, it's not right. fun to turn $10 into 18 or even 109 right. into 100. And like, you know, even if you're playing high stakes, you know, like, it's not that fun. Uh, I find the grind of cash appealing um and in order i think well i mean obviously you can play high stakes tournaments but i I think to um really play big or whatever you have to be playing at least some cash to play real big but i I don't know i mean uh i think for most people it's just like their expectations in the tournaments get out of whack and that's why i've kind of pushed back against it people are just like i'm gonna play some tournaments and it's gonna be a print fest and i'm gonna win a million dollars and then uh they get all pissed off you know what i mean so (laughs) Well, that, well, well the, the strategies are vastly different, right? Sure. I, I mean, people have to acknowledge that they're different. You can't go into a tournament playing the same way you're going to play cash games and just think you're going to make 150 cash game lineups all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. Like, that will never work. I can assure you that. Like, then you'd be essentially just throwing away your money. I agree with that. Right. And, like, I think that's what a lot of people do, right? And we're going to get into projections in a, in a little bit here, but I think yeah. a lot of people just take their optimal projections and then just ram them in 150 times and think that that's – um yeah. gonna win yeah did you okay did you start playing single entry or three max did you start putting a certain number of lineups into 150 max or did you go straight to mme yeah so so for me when i first started uh it was actually unlimited we had no mm-hmm. no entry yep. limits so uh i would and this is a funny story um i would run back from my job i didn't even have a so i i worked so close i worked two blocks so i would just run back at six o'clock lock would be at seven and i would sit there i i, I didn't really hand build lineups but you had to manually input them into DraftKings, right so mm-hmm. i had to type them over so whatever optimizer you use you have to type them over one by one into DraftKings, right and i I just kept going until lock stopped me from typing pretty much. I, I, if, if I could fit in 200, I'd fit in 200. If I could fit in 250, I would. And you could play these in micro stakes as well. So I'd be playing in the $1. I'd be playing. They had a $2 tournament. They had a three, four. Um, and I'd put as many as I could in there manually. And I, and I, I had, I had a blast. I absolutely loved it. Um, late scratches were, were obviously a problem still even back then, but, um, I, I never played single entry. I just, I just felt like if you factor in variance or randomness of any sport, really, on a daily basis, there's no, I feel like there's no way you can make the one perfect lineup every time. That's mm-hmm. just how I felt. And if I had a few tries at it, I made a few different variations of what I felt were a really, really good lineup. Um, I thought that would be better than just saying, this is my only shot today of playing. And then the next time I have... To play, I have to wait 24 hours to make my one lineup again. Like, I, I, to me, it was just, man, I want to have a lot of – I love fantasy. I want to make more lineups. There's 10 games. How can I pick eight players? Like, I, I can't do that. <laughs> well, one it, thing that I – For me, it was just I, – I love it so much I want to make more. Yeah. One, one thing I think about the single entry and the three max is it's easier to get to the top, right? And when all the money sure. is at the top and then the, and then the field size – is smaller it's just easier to get into the top three places and if you're not getting to the top three places you're just uh dead anyways you know what i mean and i also think there's some strategy like people putting their cash lineup in single entry sure and that's and and that could lead to an edge too right yeah for sure i think um so 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 if people so i'll I'll be honest if people want to grow a bankroll effectively and still play tournaments i think single entry and three max is probably the way to go if you want to play more i think the 20 max uh tournaments are probably better um, I'm, I'm, I'm at a point where I just love one fifteen everything or as, yeah. many, as much as I can. Right. Um, I, I, I feel like once you get to a certain point there, there is an art, I, I would say there is an art to one fifteen, and, and it's, it's, it's not for everyone. I'm not going to say it is for everyone, but if you can study the right ways of playing one fifty, 
it could also be really profitable as well, depending on what your goals are for DFS. So um, if, if you just want a small side income, if you just want uh, to treat it like a hobby and, and really just grind out a, a small little bankroll, like you can definitely play those. And I think that's totally correct. Uh, if you, if you want to shoot for the moon, obviously some of these bigger GPPs have the prize pool to do that. Uh, and there is, there really are ways to play those uh, effectively. Yeah. Uh, one thing I will say about playing the large field tournaments is like one thing about being right is you want to maximize the payoff when you're right, you know? So like sure. when I'm, when I'm right and I'm writing cash, I'm still only winning like 1.8, 1.8 X my money, right. you know, I, well, I, you know, I like to play some three mans and some five mans and some 10 mans. So maybe I'll two X or 2.5 X, but whatever. Uh, yeah. Maximizing when you're right in a large field GPP, it's like, I'm right. Uh, and you maximize it because you could get 50x or 100x, et cetera. So I think there's some merit to that argument uh, as well, right? Yeah, for sure. I think, um, and, and you implement that in, in 150 as well, not just in single entry or three max. So uh, you just probably do it in a different way. But um, believe me, there, there's ways to have, like, like I, I, have this little, I have this little analogy and I, I, I use it with, um, with NFL games. If, if you're playing DraftKings, like let's say we're telling our friends, you're, you're at a random bar. Oh yeah, yeah. I play DraftKings for a living. Uh, he's not going to expect you to say, I play like cash games for a living or something. Uh, mm -hmm. he's going to expect you. Oh, you try to, he sees all the commercials. He's gonna be, oh, you play for the million dollars. Have you ever won the million? Have mm -hmm. you ever done this? Have you ever won a hundred? What's the most you've ever won? You're going to say, um, 200 bucks because I play cash games. <laughs> like, I mean, that's so embarrassing. You know what I mean? Like, it's the same thing when I, when I compare it to NFL. Um, in NFL, I had this long-running joke this year with Michael Gallup, right? Um, and it's, uh, everyone says, oh, Michael Gallup failed, the air yards king, the whatever. Oh, this guy, this, this, this. Uh, listen, man, you're going to turn on the Dallas Cowboys game against Philly in prime time to watch for Michael Gallup. To me, that's... To me, that does not make any sense. Like, I'm watching Zeke, I'm watching Amari Cooper, or I have Dak, or, like, I, I have someone that's part of the game literally almost on every play. Not, not waiting for the one catch of, of, of Michael Gallup. That's the way I see it. Do the same thing with DraftKings. If you're playing DraftKings, go for the home run. There's ways to play it correctly, I promise you. Um, the argument that people would give me for that is, uh, unfortunately, Manny, we're playing with a salary cap. So how are we going to play Zeke? And uh, when there's a will, there's a way, baby. I have all <laughs> the answers, man. I have all the answers. Uh, I think listeners of this podcast are hopefully hopefully sharper than this, but I think there's still a lot of people out there who think, oh, you put in 150 lineups, you're you're locked to make money. Like all these idiots, uh, you know, these assholes who put in 150. Uh, you know, if I had the money to put in 150, I'd be making money too. And obviously, these people are like some of the dumbest people on earth can you just explain to them why they are so dumb yeah we have uh so Al, al's a good friend of ours he he coined it back in the day listen if it's so easy go into the quarter contest because there's quarter contests on DraftKings, right and you can put in 150 lineups in the quarter contest and don't tell me you don't have 20 dollars or whatever it is 15 bucks 13 but well, I, I i don't know what it is i, I think it's like 20 25 dollars 30 dollars mm -hmm. 32 dollars you have $32. Go try it. I mean, it's, it's there for your take. And that's the softest stakes we have. Those are the softest players on DraftKings. That is the biggest misconception ever. Yeah. Um, it's very easy to make a mistake. Like, okay, so um, let's say a late scratch happens at 655. You have two lineups. I have 150 across five different contests. Who do you think is going to have an easier time fixing all of that? Definitely not, definitely not me. I, that, that's for sure. So, no, that's, that, that's a huge misconception. Um, you can make mistakes, and your mistakes are now tenfold when you have 150 lineups. Um, yeah, your wins are also tenfold, but your losses are also tenfold. I can also assure you this. Look, I, I do a lot of studying on top players. It's primarily what I do. Uh, I spend most of my days not even researching sports. I leave that up to guys like you. Uh, I, I research actual DFS contests. Most of the guys you see at the top, even if they won 50 or, 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 or not, they, they, they lose most days. That's very common for a GPP player. You, you only, I think people only want to recognize when people win. And, and that's the wrong way to do it because you're putting, you're, you're putting 
wrong thoughts in your head like, oh, they always win. I can always win. No, no, we don't, or anybody for that matter, doesn't always win. That would be, imp- you'd be a quadrillionaire by now if you, <laughs> you always win. That doesn't make sense. Um, it's, it's very, very easy to lose with 150, much easier than it is to win for sure. Yeah. And, and these tournaments that you're putting 150 in are often the highest rate tournaments on DraftKings Correct. too. Um, and I would say that like most people who are putting 150, and maybe I'm wrong here, you probably know better than me, but I think most people who are putting 150 and have a losing expectation and they're just uh, repeating their losing expectation more times because they're putting in 150. Um, I don't know if that's what you found, but like just because somebody's putting in 150 doesn't mean that they have their positive EV, right? Yeah, a hundred percent. Um, I, I think there's ways that you can better your percentage that you can better your expected value. Uh, of course, but for the most part, yeah, it's, it's pretty much a losing proposition. I I, I'd say that, um, here's my thing too. Uh, if, if, if you're listening to, and I'm not trying to come, I'm really not trying to convince, right? I, I would not do such a thing. If you don't want to, you don't have to, if you don't feel comfortable, you don't have to. But, um, the reason why I started really 115 more than anything was, I wanted, I had the idea of doing this for a living. I feel like, I feel like I get that message a lot too, right? Where it's, uh, Manny, I'd one day I'd love to do this for a living. Uh, that, that, that's a little more difficult, right? Uh, so, so, so what is doing it for a living for, for people? I don't know. Um, and I'm going to put the hypothetical example of, I want to reach a hundred K bankroll, right? I, I'd love to reach a hundred K bankroll. For me, that's about four or five years ago. That's what I said. I want to reach 100K bankroll. I'll take a shot away from my job and I'll see how it goes. For me, looking at cash games, starting out with $100, $200, $300, uh, which most of the casuals play today, is very difficult to reach 100K from $100 playing 80% cash or 20% GBP or whatever the case is. It's so difficult. Almost to the point that I want to say it's impossible. Um, so, so for me, I, I, kind of the tip I give is start like some sort of saving plan. Every check you get from your from from your work or from your job, um, kind of dump it into DraftKings along the way. Uh, put more into GPPs with the correct strategies, and little by little, take the two or three or four hundred or five hundred dollar win, turn it into a couple thousand, little by little. But you have to reach for the hundred k. You can't just expect that cashing it up. I'm going to reach hundred K in two months. Like so, some guy, some guy wrote to me uh, I, in 17 weeks, I won 14 weeks of cash games. I'm like, that's impossible. You are lying to me in my face. You did not win 14 weeks. And he's like, now I'm up 10 K and I started with a thousand dollars. Like the math doesn't even work like that. Like I'm not <laughs> reading your message, man. Like uh, this does not work. Don't fool people and think that that is possible and then make other people feel bad. That's not possible. So, uh, I, I say, I say shoot for the home run, do it in a smart way. And, and, and it, it, it is doable. I think it's much harder with the landscape now, but it is doable. It is doable. Uh- I have a theory on why some people out there are anti the MME guys. They're anti the 150 guys. Let me run this past you. They they want DraftKings and fantasy to be about sports. They want it to be about knowing the players and knowing the games. And putting 150 in is not as much about sports. It's more uh, about understanding the strategy and the game of DFS and the strategy and the game of uh, optimizers, right? So you've taken away what they thought DraftKings was, which was sports, and you're adding in um, kind of something that isn't what they thought it was. That's my theory. What do you think? Uh, you are 100% correct, um, but and I agree with you. I think that's totally right. But the reality is exactly that. Like DFS, um, no matter how much you know about a sport, I feel like studying the actual game of fantasy can go a really long way. Like knowing roster construction is, in my opinion, so much more valuable than knowing the teams inside out, right? And um, if there, there are so many guys, there are countless examples of guys that don't know a single player in any sport and are extremely, extremely profitable. Some of the top players do not know a single name of a, of a single basketball player. And they're great NBA DFS players. It exists. Why? Because it's it's. I, I wouldn't say it's a soft game. It definitely isn't. But there there are proven strategies to win. Um, roster construction exists in in football. I think it's probably the most important aspect of football. I think in in baseball even more. Uh, in basketball, 
slightly less, but I mean, to an extent, you could still be uh, a, a much better lineup creator than everyone else, even if you don't know the players. Like, it's studying fantasy. And DFS is, in my opinion, a little more important than the actual sport. It's unfortunate because that's not what we thought of fantasy. That's not what we think of fantasy. But, but it is a reality. And 150 just kind of puts it in the light where – I'm, I'm sorry, single entry guys, but it, it's a reality. Whether you're playing, even if you're playing single entry, it's true in single entry tournaments as well. It's, it's not just in the 150 maxes or the, or, the, or the 20 maxes or if there's 75 max. There's, in every single tournament, I think, even cash games to an extent, roster construction is huge. It, it's yeah. absolutely critical. Well, and I think the point that you're making, and I think it's the right one, is that people are so focused on whether, you know, I have Anthony Davis for 52.4 DraftKings points and you have right. him for 50.3 DraftKings points. You right. know what I mean? And like, everybody's like, oh, well... Uh, you have to play Anthony Davis or you don't. And, and you know, Adam has him at this or, or whatever. The projections are so close, no matter, you know, what site you're using for projections or if you're doing your own or whatever, they're often going to be within this really tight um, band that I don't want to say it's irrelevant, but it's like almost irrelevant whether your projections are exactly right. Am I correct there? Yeah, you're also 100% correct there. So I actually track um, for football. I did it for basketball. I'm doing it. I'm currently doing it for hockey and PGA as well, where I track most of the notable projection systems, right? Where uh, every single night I am right at lock. I have everyone's projections um, and I run it and I do the whole R squared thing to see how it correlates uh, to, to, to actual scores and see who, in, in other words, is closest to the most accurate projections every single night. Um, I rank them one through 10, but believe me, it does not even matter what you use. It, it, it's, it's all really, really close. And you're totally right. Anyone could have Anthony Davis at 52. I could have him at 53. Someone has him at 54. He goes for 60. Uh, I wasn't any better than you because I was a point ahead of you. Like, uh, that's not going to matter. Um, the way you actually build lineups uh, should get you all to the same amount of Anthony Davis at the end of the slate. So you're totally correct. If, if and, and that applies to every sport. I think football even more i i think the projections in football mm -hmm. become even less relevant because there's so many rules that go into building a lineup there where look we're, we're all really close if you have if you have julio jones at 23 and i have him at 21 it's not a huge difference believe yeah. me it's not a huge difference it's all about roster construction stacking is a huge thing uh, correlations are a huge thing in football I, I i think it all comes down to that and who can make better lineups it sounds cliche right the whole make better lineups thing but just yeah. just make better lineups. There is ways to do it. And I think maybe that's one of the reasons I'm attracted to cash because it's like I have such strong conviction about, you know, I have this guy. You can't live without this guy this week. And then right. if they if people want to play me, they don't want to play him. They're just like, I think they're just, you know, a huge dog to me right away. Right. Whereas right. Uh, if I think this guy is a great play and I slam him into 150, well, you know, whatever. I still need the other eight guys in my lineup to completely go berserk too for right. me to even have a chance. Um so I don't know. I think people, you can get people to hang themselves quicker in cash, I guess I would say. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I, think, I think when you're playing more lineups, you go down, uh, it, there's a little more math involved, which mm -hmm. I think people just really easily get scared of. Where in, in cash, it's really easy to do maybe one lineup in your head and, and, and you kind of have to throw math out the window. You're playing the best plays and making the best possible lineups, making the best percentile lineup you can and wherever it falls, uh, that's what you have for the day. I, I, I think people find that a little bit easier. I think when people have a challenge in front of them, uh, it kind of scares them away just a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I, 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 think, I, I think both are fine. Listen, if, if you're a great cash game player, continue playing cash. Don't, don't forget about cash. That is, that is people's money make. And there are plenty of guys that do cash only for a living. The same way there are guys that do GPPs only, there are guys that do cash only. They're, 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 there's both versions of it. So I, I get both sides. I, I'm... It, it, it's whatever suits the person, I think. Uh, let me ask you this. If I'm playing a 150 max tournament, sure. do I have to have 150 entries in that tournament to have a positive expectation? Or can I put 5, 10, 20 into a 150 max and still expect to come out ahead? That is, that is a very good question. Um, you can have as many entries as you want. Um, the more entries don't actually mean you have a better expectation. So uh, I have 150, you have, say, 20 in that same tournament doesn't mean I have a better chance of winning than you. Not, not even close. Um, essentially, when you make a lineup, you're making 
the next best projected lineup, right? And then my third lineup will be the next best projected one and so on and so forth until I reach 150. Essentially, every lineup after my first one is getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and worse, right? You only have 20. So you can't go all the way to 150. You cannot, I, I, we both have the same chances. Believe me, we both have the same chances. Uh, again, if, if, if anyone wants to try it at lower stakes, try it at lower stakes. Um, just because someone's running one, let's say this, Chipotle Addict has 150 lineups. I have, I have 50. I'll never win. I'm never going to beat him. There are so many other entries in the tournament. It's not just him. Uh, and, and he only has 150. I, I, but that, that to me shouldn't scare people off at all. No. Yeah. Um, I think there is some merit to the case that with all the money in the top three places that giving yourself the most chances to get to those top three places, uh, makes sense. Um, it, it, it depends how you build your lineups too. Like again, again, if you're putting 20 cash lineups in there, doesn't matter if you have 150, 150 cash lineups won't make it up there anyway. So, so it kind of depends how you're building. If you're building optimally for GPPs, I think even 20, 30, 40 lineups, you're still fine. You still have a legitimate chance to get up there. All right. I think one thing that turns off me and probably uh, a lot of other people who are, actually know what's going on is the uh, hashtag screenshot life that comes with these <laughs> <laughs> these quote unquote GPP players, you know, these guys pop up after two months of no screenshots, then they hit for a hundred K they get the screenshot, they get the likes, they get the retweets. They're probably stuck net, you know, 200, 300 K, uh, yeah. in that span, uh, defend the honor of these quote unquote GPP players who are, uh, I think a lot of times trying to, uh, deceive people. And I'm not talking about users. Like I love seeing like fans, people, uh, who, uh, make a score and they want to tweet it out. That that that's awesome. I'm talking about people who try to use their you know pretty clearly fraudulent screenshots to sell their business. I, I don't know if they're fraudulent, right? I mean, they 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 definitely won the hundred k that night. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, but 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 you're totally right. They 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 are down. They are down. Um. So I I, I do talk to a lot of um top players in the industry, and I I kind of know what some of these guys are going through. Uh. I I, I don't I don't I don't really uh put them to light and say oh they're losing players or whatever i mean th adam we have we have accounts following all of our play every single week in football i mean i i it's it's very hard for us to start hiding some of this stuff you know what i mean like it, it exists um people there 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 are big time losers um and the fact of the matter is screenshots attract a lot of business for companies it's a sad reality it's a sad reality. It, the casual might see a, a 100K screenshot. Who did he use? I am going to go to X site. I, uh, unfortunately, it's a sad reality. That's why they continue doing it. But is it, is it, I don't think it's fair because I know really, and uh, again, through the stuff that I do, I, I kind of track all the top players as well too. And I, I see it from a profit and loss thing. It, it's, it's, you should not be posting a screenshot, man. At least not, not through this downswing. Don't, don't. Why, why, why do people have to do that? Oh, 150K, tomorrow 200K. You want me to show you how much you're down? I can do the same thing, dude. Uh, but but, but it, it, it's a big moneymaker when it comes to, 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 to running a company and businesses. So depending on where they're coming from, yeah, the screenshots matter a lot. Um, I, I, in that term, in, in that case, yeah, they, they are pretty fraud and it's, it's, it's unfortunate how it goes about. All right. Uh, let's get to something, maybe some actionable stuff here. Let's say someone is pretty good at DFS, right? They try really hard. They're on top of the news. You know, they understand floor ceiling ranges to some degree, but they've never mass multi entered before. Well, what would be a few things you would tell them that they should know? And let's, let's do football because we talk mostly about football here. I know it's basketball season, sure. but Sorry. I'm most curious about football. Yeah. Okay. So um, a few things for football. First of all, I, I tell you to start at the lowest stakes possible that you could 150. Number one, because they're the softest. Um, I'm not. I'm not saying anything. No, uh, people don't know. So start at the lowest stakes. Number one. Um, correlation is way more important in two sports than any other sport. That would be baseball. Number one. Football. Number two. Uh, obviously, stacking. Um, game stack have become increasingly popular uh, these last couple of years. Um, and then, uh, how you kind of play the percentages or, or at least your own exposures compared to the field. And I think that's where, uh, the edge comes from in football. I'd say 
learn learn the actual game of fantasy forget forget cuz cuz I've gotten it too many I've followed football for uh, for 40 years uh, I'm going to play Kenny Stills this week all right that that's terrible dude that doesn't, doesn't really work. <laughs> uh I, I i'd say focus on focus on player stacks the most and correlation between games i think that's where you get the most money i always have this one thing i want to tell everyone it's 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 I, I hate saying it because it sounds so bad but play good players really just play good players uh, antonio callaway is not a good don't 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 play don't play bad play good players please uh, play good well, players. I wanted to ask you about that because a lot of people assume that you need to play these off the wall plays in order to finish high in GPPs that you need, you know, Kenny Stills or Antonio Callaway or, or, or whatever um, it is. It sounds like you disagree. Do you look at projected ownership percentage when you're making your lineups? Yeah. So uh, if, if you could take any one tip from anything, I'd probably say on this, uh, on this uh, stream podcast, everything I, I, it'd be, don't play bad players. Here's what I mean. Um, the whole Michael Gallup thing, and I laugh because uh, I, I think the one single edge I, I, I even have, and I'd say it on air, I don't care. It's um, while people are playing the one percenters and trying to be heroes on Twitter or whatever they want to be, or like, oh, yeah, I recommended uh, Bellamy or something, whoever, uh, I am, I'm, I'm, I'm still playing relevant players. So I'll play Adam Thielen. Um, and I'll play Julio Jones and maybe I could afford a Chris Godwin or something. I, I, I don't know why everyone is out on the bucks. Like that, that to me is still a good player. And not, not, not a good player would be uh, Callaway or something when no one's out. I mean, not that he does much anyway. You know what I mean? Or, or like for me, it was Michael Gallup over and over and over. And I heard Michael Gallup for like five straight weeks. I, 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 I get it. I understood why people were there. But realistically, what's his upside? Every single week. I, I, I don't know. You're kind of shooting for the moon. I, I like watching games where I have the main player in every game. If you have that mentality going into building lineups, I think you'd be much, much more profitable. Uh, speaking to everyone listening, for sure. And uh, how do you ensure, though, if you have the main guy in every game that your lineups are contrarian? Because I've done some work on back testing. You know, people who won the Millie Maker and stuff like that, and almost all of them had – you know, the cumulative ownership of their players under 110%, under, under 120%, um, et cetera, et cetera. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, I think that could kind of get you in a trap when you're looking at overall exposure. So um, there, there, there's actually a better way to kind of tell if your lineup can be, even pre-lock, if your lineup could be different. Um, and that would kind of be by multiplying exposures instead. Hopefully that the product uh, is, is, is less than one essentially because then there'd be some even if you don't want to get into math i'd say once you focus on correlations and stacking believe me i i I know that everyone knows about stacking and stacking your qb with a wide receiver but if you're if you go to a further extent and start game stacking there's very few people compared to the sizes of these tournaments that are game stacking that by nature your lineups are going to be vastly different from the field so i think if you're correlating correctly and stacking correctly you shouldn't have that problem, even if you weren't, you know, doing some sort of math formula to figure out if your lineup was different or not. All right. It is, it is NBA season. Let's talk some NBA mass multi-entering. What, what's going on there? What do people need to know if they want to try putting 150 in to an NBA contest? Yeah. Um, so, so, so this one's rather easy. And I think NBA is only getting harder because um, it's much easier for people to go to a random optimizer and just click optimize, right? You don't really have the whole stacking rules or anything. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of, you don't really put all your eggs in one basket, but you come really close to it in NBA, right? It's the, by far the most easily projected sport. Um, so, so just play your players. You can go 100% on certain players. You can go 80%. You can go 70%. I think uh, you only have to be slightly different at the top. Um, and when it comes, if you're doing 150, uh, don't really pass, even on full nine or 10 game slates, don't pass the 50 player mark. Use a you know, around 40 to 45 players, um, keep it kind of concise, uh, keep your one percenters to a minimum. Uh, and I think you should be fine. Nothing, nothing crazy, nothing. You, you don't have to invent the wheel in NBA. It's already invented for you. Uh, I have a question about late swap and putting 150. And let's say it's nine o'clock and something happens. Are you able to re-rack all of your lineups or is that a, a, a manual process or do you use the, the mass player replace, et cetera, et cetera? 
Uh, so I don't use the I don't I don't use the global player replace anymore because we now have tools that allow you to late swap more efficiently, right? So um, I, I am able to get my CSV from DraftKings. You just download on the lineups page. Uh, I'm able to upload it to the same software I use. Uh, I'm able to click uh, late swap, kind of adjust my projections, and it'll remake the lineups, already locking the players that are locked in for all of my lineups. So. Uh, yeah, it comes with being a, a GPP player. You kind of find ways to make these uh, process a little more easier. Uh, yeah. and, and right now, 2019, uh, all of the top players have the same, uh, I guess, software to use to make this happen. So yeah, it's, yeah. it's very, very efficient, right? It could happen in a matter of two minutes. We could get that news at 8.57 and we'd be able to fix 150 in pretty much all our lineups. Now, before it was not like that. Yeah. Yeah. And I had that experience in WNBA a lot, you know, handling 150 lineups and getting news right before lock. I mean, and I, I had never done it before, but I got really fast to the point where I could change all 150 of my lineups in like two or three minutes. Yeah. Um, That's great. Like you said. Um, all right. Tell me about Twitch because Al keeps telling me about Twitch. You got to get on Twitch. You got, you got to kill the zombies. Uh, <laughs> you, you have this stream uh, on Twitch where you talk about this stuff all the time. Why? The Twitch platform. I guess it sounds like you're a professional gamer. I mean, what does that even mean? I mean, first professional GPP player, now professional gamer. I mean, this is out of control. <laughs> the, the the most obscure titles for you. Who are you, Manny? Uh, I, I I so so throughout. And it's funny because I turned quote unquote, you, you, I mean, you see it now. There's organizations of like video game teams or whatever mm -hmm. that make ridiculous amounts of money. I mean, Mark Cuban's invested in a few of them. I, mm -hmm. I, it's, I, I, I got in really early. Uh, so when I was 15, I actually turned pro. It's the weirdest thing. Um, <laughs> uh, and, and I needed a consent form to go to these tournaments. I had excused absences for like two years of my high school. Uh, it was, it was the most ridiculous thing, but uh, it, it soaked up a lot of my time to the point where I, I just had to give it up. It's like a full-time job. At the time, Twitch didn't exist. We didn't have social media how it is now. Uh, it was very hard to really make money in the space outside of uh, a couple thousand dollars as a kid. So for me, it, it was fun. I was making money playing video games, but that, was, that, was, that wasn't the future. At least what? I didn't think at the time. Uh, Twitch, Twitch is a cool platform. I don't really play video games on it. It's really to just... Uh, just kind of focus on what I do here, just kind of study players. I give a different look to DFS, really. Uh, and I thought Twitch was a perfect platform. I really do think is, it, it is the platform of the future, man. I, I really like the, 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 what it projects to be the next few years. And uh, yeah, I was a good friend of ours. He, he's another one that he plays a little more video games on there than I do. Uh, I, I really don't play much at all. Um, but I, but I just love the platform. I get to be more personable with the guys. I get to interact on a one-on-one -on -one level, which I love. I get to be myself. It's not a, an actual production production. So mm -hmm. uh, kind of a loose format. It, it lets me be me and still talk fantasy the way I want to talk. What game did you play when you quit school to be a professional gamer? <laughs> CS 1.6, Counter-Strike 1.6. Yeah. There's still Counter-Strike Go now, I think. Right. But I, yeah. I, I, I'm not in that scene anymore. Long removed. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds funny thank you for laughing at him oh so kind dude <laughs> this loser playing video games on my pod get get off my pod I, I just i just can't help it i don't know I, every time that uh that we talk about the video games i don't know why i just i i just laugh i, I don't know i mean i, I loved video games but I mean, nobody played more video games than me growing up i played nhl 94 i played nba live 96 i played fifa like those are my games i Hashtag and at that point old? Yeah, I mean, at, at that point in my life, I would have challenged anybody. Like, I thought I was actually really good. I'm sure if I would have tried to, quote, unquote, turn pro, it would have been a disaster. But, but yeah, I, I loved video games. Um, you know, video it's just games are fun, man. It's just crazy that it's just, like, back in such a big way now. It's, it, for, now, like, now, it's, now it's – I would have never thought it would have gotten this big, yeah. to be honest. I, I would have never thought this, but – Insane. Well, I'm going to come, I'm going to play with you guys, man. I, Al keeps telling me I got to play with you guys. I'm going to come on and play with you guys. Uh, it, 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 it's like, it's like, um, it, it's like a networking event, 2019 version. Uh, let's all just do it online through, through a video game. Let's, let's go to a marshmallow concert in Fortnite. H how about that? dude? Um, all right. We got a few listener questions here. We're not going to hit the theme music, Luke, because these are actually serious uh, uh, listener questions. First one, we're just going to do four. First one comes from Adam Burke. He said, what's a common player pool size for turbo slates and full slates? I think you already mentioned uh, for NBA, you like to be between 40 and 45 on full slates. What about turbo slates? And what about NFL? I'm curious, what do you think is a good player pool size? 
Yeah, so so this actually depends on sport. So uh, I mentioned NBA full slates would be 40 to 45. I think if you wanted to go a tiny bit higher, I think that's okay. Uh, turbo slates will kind of be cut in half depending on the size of the turbo slate, right? So um, anywhere for sorry, anywhere from 20 to 30, I think it's pretty good. Um, if you're talking football, it goes a little bit higher. So uh, I think 60 to 70 is actually the sweet spot for football Sundays. Um, if, if you're running that many lineups, this also depends on how many lineups you're running. If you're running, say, I don't know, 20 lineups, 30 lineups, I think 50 is, is a pretty good middling ground there. Um, but if, but if you're running as many lineups as you can, I think 60 to 70 is a perfect spot there. Yep. Uh, question two comes from fantasy focus. He says, do you have different strategies for short slates as opposed to full slates condensed pool to take a stand on guys or try to get a piece of everyone? He asks. Getting a piece of everyone is the, such a big myth. Uh, 150 people cannot do that anyway. There's so many different combinations. There's so many players. Uh, that's, that's not possible. So, uh, no, uh, you, you don't take a stand on every player. Uh, condensed pools uh, depends on sport. Uh, so in NBA, yeah, you do have a condensed pool. Again, if you're going 40 to 45, you limit your, your, your one. I, I, I call them one percenters, but guys that you only use once in, in, in your pool of lineups, uh, try to limit that as much as you can. Um, I've explained that, uh, I'll explain it briefly. It's, you have one shot to kind of put the pieces around that one person. It doesn't really make sense. Uh, you kind of, you lose more lineups that way in the long run than you do by playing more one lineup or guys towards the bottom of your, of your, of your pool. So, uh, try to limit those guys stay in, in football, stay closer to 60, 65, 70, depending on how many lineups you play there. I think one percenters are a little bit more viable. Uh, again, granted that they are good players, um, and, and and does my does my does my strategy change? No, not at all. I think um, you're st I'm still stacking the same way in in afternoon slates in football. I'm still game stacking the same way in, in basketball. I'm just using less players, but using the same strategy. So strategies don't really change uh, once you've mastered them. Uh, just the amount of players you use um, and the stand you take on guys uh, differs between the sizes of slates and stuff. When you say game stack in NFL, how many guys out of the nine in your roster are you talking about from the same game? Uh, funny, because I think there's two viable ways to do this. Um, and, and every pro does one of these two ways. Uh, you go, so including quarterback, uh, you go four or five. Uh, I think six only won one time. So what I mean is, uh, if, if you're doing four, you're doing like, and, and I'll just mention the Saints because they're on my head right now. Uh, you do Drew Brees. Uh, Alvin Kamara, Michael Thomas, and then one from the other side. That would be four total players. If you want to use five, uh, you could use two and two. Uh, you could use one and two. There's different combinations. But four or five are what most of the pros use pretty much every single week. Uh, question three comes from Dave Ando. He says, if you could go back in time to the day you started DFS, what advice would you give yourself? Is it is it to find your true calling as a high stakes cash grinder, Manny? Uh, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say um, learn, learn, learn DFS. I also spent a lot of time trying to go uh, into teams and, and find out whether in basketball, I try to find out rotations as much as I could. Um, I, in football, I try to find who could be that one percenter. Uh, I, I try to look for team news all the time. I try to look for injuries. I try to look for beat reporting. I'd say go into fantasy from the very beginning. Learn the terms value. Learn how to uh, build EV throughout your lineups. Learn how to correlate lineups better. Learn how to stack better. I think that's worth way more today than anything else. Uh, and if I got a head start at that, say in year one, uh, who knows where I'd be today? I have no idea. Or anyone could be for that matter. I think that's so, so important. All right, last question we're going to do comes from friend of the show, Eric Beamfor. He says, who is the better zombie killer, Manny or Smiz? I mean, you were a pro. I would I have to think that it's you, right? <laughs> Even Smiz will tell you it's me. Oh, that's a neat <laughs> one. Uh, I, I feel like he has, he has his YouTube channel of now highlights. Don't tell him I'm saying this. He has his YouTube of highlights. It's going to be a highlight reel of me. <laughs> it's, it's exactly, with with him shout casting right with him with him casting what's going on uh smith is a good friend man we always have fun but uh even he'll tell you man i'm 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 I, i'm pretty good at this adam i, I think you should join man i would like for you to join I, i'm on smith's team come join okay me. yeah i'm gonna play with you guys all right that's gonna do it you said it all i i think this was something that we've never talked about on this podcast before and i always find that interesting and uh 
yeah, man, I'm certainly intrigued. I wish it didn't take away from my focus on where I have the most money because I'd be more right. likely to do it. But uh, but yeah, I, I think it's something that people should look at. And most people listening to this probably can still play the 25 cent. You know what I mean? Like you don't get restricted yeah, yeah. to the $5 till after a while. So you could play the, um, what do they call it? The mini max now? Is that what yeah, Jack is calling it? There, there's, a very, there's a very selected few that can't see those tournaments anymore. I think you have to have over a million in total entries. There are not many people that have that. So yeah, everyone can see the 25 cent or the 50 cent. I think it's the mini max 50 cents. I, I, I'm pretty sure most of the listeners because i mean it's, it's such a small percentage that can't yeah. see them can 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 play those so yeah give, give it a shot there's ways to do it correctly don't get discouraged uh it's, it's possible um all right where can the people find you we know we know they can find you on twitch i think some people's hurdle to twitch is like they literally don't know how to get on to the twitch platform am i crazy uh yeah you're crazy it's just a link the same way i'd give a link to anywhere else the same way i'd give a link to a website uh you don't even need an account to watch it's free everything's free uh twitch i'm m laura uh on twitter i'm at m laura m l o r a and then all my stuff is at lineupstudy.com all right thanks for coming on manny this was great appreciate it man. Uh, for producer luke for manny for jerry full spread eagle in the background uh i am adam good luck everybody We are promoters at DraftKings and also avid fans. Our usernames are Adam Levitan, Al Smizzle, and CSU Ram 88 We may sometimes play on our personal accounts in the games that we offer advice on. Although we have expressed our personal view on the games and strategies in this podcast, they do not necessarily reflect the views of DraftKings, and we also may deploy different players and strategies than what we recommended in this podcast.